So yeah, we were at we were at this point where it's talking about a real aperture camera. It's a camera, right? And uh, the whole idea is that, similar to the way you look at a pinhole image, right? We want to actually understand how is the image formed in a in a in a real aperture camera. By real aperture, I said itself. I told you, this is not a pinhole. Okay. And uh, the whole idea is that, uh, of course, one way to one way to increase the amount of light is to maybe increase the aperture itself. You can still have a pin. You don't call it a pinhole, but maybe right, you can maybe increase the size of the hole and then say that I can let in more light then. But then what will happen? If you simply made the aperture bigger, right, instead of a pinhole. Like I told you yesterday that uh, pinhole actually means that, you know, out of all the rays that are coming out of the object, right, like this. Uh, so here is your sensor plane and here is your pinhole and you could have a 3D scene sitting there, right. And what happens when you you look at a point uh, the, on the, on the scene? Let me maybe indicate by a different color. You have a point in the scene, and then you know that you know that right. There are kind of see so many rays which are actually coming out of it, and only that ray which is able to able to pass through the through the aperture. It right, is seen by the seen by the right, seen seen by the image plane. Right. So in a sense, it gives you a dark picture. Right, if you simply use it that way, or they, or you have to wait for a very really long time, collect right enough number of photons by just waiting longer. But then we know that you know one can't wait for too long because one it decreases your frame rate and all that, and secondly, things could begin to move, okay, right, while you are imaging, and that will cause issues. So we said that we will go for lens. Now one of the things that you could ask is why not we just make this aperture bigger? Huh? That would mean that uh, right, you will end up with uh, with an image which will which will uh, start to uh, start to already look uh, blurred because of the fact that uh, some of these rays that are that are coming out it, it is no longer true that they will hit one point right so from one scene point multiple rays come out and some of them some of them could actually hit adjacent adjacent sensor sensor pixels and therefore you'll see an averaging effect right so one of the one of the nice things about a pinhole is that whatever be the scene whether the be the scene is planar whether the scene is uh, 3D, it doesn't really matter, everything comes into focus. Just have to wait longer so as to be able to collect enough number of photons. And if you can afford that, then you get a get a picture that is always, right? So a pinhole will always yield a focused image. Always yield a focused image. Okay, you can never see a defocused image okay, uh, with actually a pinhole camera. Okay. So, so this focused image is what is important. Now, what we are saying is, <laughs> all right. So, so we know that, right? We can't really just arbitrarily increase the aperture size and all. So, instead of that, what we say is, we should actually bring in a lens, right? Because then a lens can collect these rays and it will focus them, right? Because you cannot see when these rays are coming in arbitrarily through an aperture. There is no mode to focus them. They can just spread all over the all over the scene. So instead of that, what you could do is you could actually make some system such as a convex lens that will actually make these rays right come to focus at some point, and then, and then it you know it looks like we are done because now we are collecting more rays, right? So we are gathering you know as much intensity as we could, and uh, and the idea is that now you can actually you can actually get get the get the get an image that is going to be much brighter, which is actually you know a lot more lot more quick. Uh, to to grab and uh, and and uh, no and of course right these are the kind of images that you see outside but then one also realizes that when you capture with a camera with a lens you know which is what all cameras typically have you see that not all images are focused right even if you are still correct so 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 when you talk about so there is a, there is a phenomenon called actually motion blur okay now this motion blur is something that is common to both pinhole. So when I say it will always yield a focused image, what I really mean is that as long there is really be no optical sort of you know uh, this one a uh, defocusing. Okay, it doesn't mean that uh, with a kind of pinhole camera, already right, you cannot get a blurred picture or something. You can get motion blur if you if you start to move. Okay, whether you have pinhole or whether you have a real aperture camera that is with a lens, that will anyway happen. 
Okay, so so if there is motion blur, so this can this will affect a pinhole image as well. You know that is even if you are capturing through a pinhole, simply because of the fact that you are moving, right? And therefore, multiple scene points will get averaged, or whether you use a lens or a real aperture. So I'll call this RA, right? Real aperture camera. So whether you use a pinhole or a lens, motion blur is something that can happen in both, depending upon what is moving, who is moving, and so on. But as far as there is another thing which is called a defocus blur, okay, which, 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 uh, right, which, which, you know, is not something that will happen in a pinhole. Okay, this, this can never happen. Whereas a real aperture camera, it will happen. Again, right, it need not always happen. Doesn't mean that every image that you capture with a lens is going to be defocused. Okay, it depends upon. What this right? What this particular camera? So the real aperture camera. What kind of a scene it is actually looking at? So the whole idea, right, behind uh, you know, so the way we now want to kind of you know shift these gears is such that we have we understand what uh, right, what kind of uh, pinhole, what does a pinhole model mean, and what does it uh, mean to capture an image with a with a kind of pinhole camera? We want to understand image formation. Right? So our idea goal it is really to understand image formation formation in a real aperture camera and during the process right during the process we will try to draw upon whatever we know already in terms of a pinhole so if there is a parallel that we can draw between what we have learnt in pinhole and we feel that that so some of those laws are still applicable here we would want to draw upon them right and draw or uh, draw upon a right, pinhole where needed okay wherever applicable or rather wherever not say Let's not say wherever where needed. Let's say wherever applicable. Okay, so then it basically means that uh, so uh, you know like like I was kind of giving an example yesterday. You go and take a DSLR camera, you capture an image, right? You see a typically you go near a flower or something, and then you want to image an insect or something, right? And then you suddenly see that the insect is in focus, that everything else comes blurred. There's also some people do it for uh, for this artistic reasons. Right, such pictures look more real to people. They feel that when you show somebody a, you know, a picture like that, then they feel that that's more realistic. The other other reason is not simply realism or something. It's simply because of the way this this lens works. Right, the, the whole image formation happens. Now, what you would want to understand is how is that image formation going on, and uh, and then uh, right during the course, we would like to also understand. Just as right, you have these uh, things called LTI systems in one D, right? We say that uh, we say that right, having a linear and uh, sort of a time invariant system, right, is, is somewhat ideal, right, in the in the sense that uh, in the sense that I mean, I mean, if you have an LTI system, you know the advantages, right, in the sense that there could be a convolution that there is a convolution that explains all the operations, and then there's an impulse response which helps, which gives you all the window into that system. You want to examine stability, you want to examine causality, whatever you want to do, right, all that there is just one impulse response that you have to see defined. Right for that LTI system, and that explains everything. Then you know, going from a Fourier to the uh, to the you know time domain and all is so easy, right? Going back and forth, everything is invertible. So so many advantages if you see, if you look at an LTI system. Now if you look at uh, look at a real aperture camera, and suppose you look upon this as again an image. Similarly, I know same thing also holds for actually a pinhole. A pinhole is much more easy. Uh, along the way, right? I'll tell you why. Um, right? What happens? But what we are also looking at is what is called LSI. Okay, just as just as we have uh, something called a time invariance uh, in an imaging system, we have what is called in an imaging system we have what is called a uh, uh, space invariance, okay, or shift invariance. Okay, some people call it linear shift invariant. Some books call it linear space invariant. So what it means is just as just as you ask, right, if it is LTI, you know, x of x of t produces y of t, then x of t minus t naught for whatever for all values of t naught, any value of t naught should produce y of t minus t naught. And not y of t minus alpha t naught or something. It should be exactly t naught, right? We don't accept anything other than t naught. Uh, similarly, right? We want to examine whether a lens is actually such a system, whether it is linear, whether it is shift invariant. Okay, then because if it is so, then there are some there are some nice kind of say relationships that we can draw in terms of an equivalent of what we call as the impulse response, right? With respect to one D systems, we have something called actually a point spread function with respect to a two D system. Okay, what is called a point spread function, or typically this is referred to as a PSF point spread function. Okay, now 
so the whole goal now right as we move on is to sort of place these things in order okay so examine examine all of this and be able to explain right be able to explain as to why or right why you see an image right that you see and how do you how do you kind of right relate that to the, the to the scene itself and you should be able to appreciate the fact that oh right given this scene this is what should have happened anyway right so there should be no surprises in terms of what you see there can be some surprises right that uh, maybe i'll talk to you about later but most of it should be very straightforward to sort of figure out okay now uh, okay so with respect to that right now let's just move on and uh, kind of right uh, and sort of look at uh, right, look at a look at a lens okay mm. let me just draw this one figure okay and then we will take it from there i have this such a worn out paper mm. okay now let me maybe draw it on the okay here itself we'll draw so what i have right what i'm going to show is now so so it's like this okay so the way i want you to understand is okay now right what we want to see is i have let us say i have a i have a system like this okay where of course this is my focal length right and then i have a scene here what will happen okay and then with respect to this i see an image correct because this is like you know a pinhole pinhole image now if i if i if i throw in a lens here all remaining same nothing changes okay the scene the the plane nothing changes i replace this with a lens i mean i'm not drawing it very correctly but yeah right if i if i if i now replace it with a lens i want to see what all happens now right and i want to be able to explain as to uh, how is this related to a pinhole image if there is something right that we can draw if there is a relation that we can draw between the two and secondly are there some 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 other recipient principles in pinhole that will still be applicable here and thirdly what is this what is this image formation how does the image formation change when i replace the pinhole with a lens okay that's the idea